All right, this is going to be the lecture on chapter 16. For this lecture in particular, I really think the exercises brought most of the points home. So if you've done the exercises and reviewed those um, solutions, you will hopefully have an idea of sort of what causes, what prevents an information cascade. Here, I just want to provide uh, some really like the solid insights of what they're really trying to do and just emphasizing a few strong points that we need to get, keep in mind. Right, number one, strong point here, the idea of herding. When does it make sense to go along with the crowd? For the most part in the chapter, it talks about a lot of bad things and it just at least briefly mentions the idea of good things uh, you can get from going along with what other people are doing. We will talk in the next chapter about network effects. That is, you get a direct benefit of other people doing exactly the same thing as you. Uh, in this chapter, though, it's about information. So you can get information from other people because you feel that maybe your information isn't quite up to par, and that then uh, will aid you. And so this is a I want to emphasize more and more or as we go through this, this is definitely a rational decision and we're trying to sort of get an idea of why does it make sense or not to go along with the crowd. All right, so the main idea of going along with the crowd is the idea of what they call the wisdom of the crowd. And so if we're talking about, you know, if we're looking at how many marbles are in a bottle or how much this cow weighs, and you go and you talk to a thousand people, if the judgments are independent, you'll get closer to the, a the average of those judgments will be closer to the actual amount because you have sort of a triangulation if they're independent. If they're not independent, that is uh, decisions are being made in sequence or for other reasons of social influencing that are actually outside the scope of this chapter, then that causes other problems. So. What we're gonna do for the most part here is say, this is a rational decision, okay? The reason in the chapter it even has Bayes' rule on there is to say in a purely, purely, purely rational decision-making environment, an information cascade occurs. So in the book, when it talks about a prior probability this basically represents, it's somewhat your uncertainty, but it's the idea that, for example, you know, a new restaurant opens. If you think one out of every two restaurants selected, so half of the restaurants are good and half of them are bad, that means randomly speaking, when you select a restaurant, you expect 50% you know, chance that it's going to be good. Given this idea that I think, hey, there's a 50-50 chance this new restaurant's good, my payoff interacts with the prior probability. And what should happen here is you're somewhat indifferent to what's going on. And that means, you know, if I think, okay, there's 50-50 chance the new restaurant's good, um, I should be able to say more or less, you know, randomly picking, it's indifferent to me, um, based on the rewards I get, choosing a good or a bad restaurant. So if I think, just for example, if I really have a bad time at a bad restaurant, okay, so it's just awful and you know this terrible, then if there's a 50-50 chance that the new restaurant's good, I'm not gonna go because the, the bad thing that happens from a bad restaurant is so terrible. The alternative is the same, right? I don't know if you've eaten at a bad restaurant. I mean, the food kind of sucks, but it's, you know, is it really the worst thing you've ever had happen? Where a new restaurant that's good is like, woohoo, I get to tell all my friends this awesome restaurant. So the idea in the book is that you're initially indifferent. Um, it actually, um, yeah, we'll get to that in a second. So the payoff combines, you should be initially more or less indifferent according to what the book says. We'll talk about you don't really need to be indifferent um, the next issue is the signals, and that is you need or you're going to gather information about this, in this case, a new restaurant, and you're trying to gather information that would say whether or not accepting or trying this new restaurant would be good or bad. So in the book, when they say, you know, assume that good is true, what they're saying is going to the restaurant is a good idea. So each signal, 
So the signals you gather have a conditional probability and that reflects how reliable it is. So the signal here might be, I might look at the menu and I read the little descriptions of each dish and looking at the descriptions, I would say, oh, like these descriptions are awesome. And given these great descriptions, there's a 75% chance that a good restaurant would write their descriptions this way. And only 25% chance that a bad restaurant would write their descriptions this way. So that's the sort of reliability of the signals that you look at, okay? Now, one of the things about the, the book sort of makes it, they make a simplification that makes it a little kind of weird. And that is if we go back up when we said there's a 50-50 chance of the new restaurant being good, that 50%, that's the P. And then because it's 50-50, that means P equals one minus P. So more or less P isn't a factor at all. The 75% chance down here below, that's the Q and the Q is really why, you know, it ends up being like, hey, there's a 75% chance that it's a good restaurant. Um, so again, the whole point of using Bayes rule is to show rational decision making. So we're popping up Bayes rule here. Um, if you'll notice here, we're saying you choose the option. If the probability that the option is good given a high signal is greater than the initially estimated probability that the option was good. So remember, we looked at the menu things and we saw there is a 75% probability that a good restaurant would have menu options this good and only a 25% probability that a bad restaurant would have menu descriptions this good. If we look at this formula, the PRG given H, we have to calculate that. The probability that it's good, given that we got a high signal, is also based on the idea that, you know, we got a high signal and we said we had a 75% chance of getting a high signal if it's a good restaurant. That's PR bracket H given G. And then there was the 25% chance of a high signal that it's bad. That was the PRH given uh, B. So we're calculating the probability that it's good given that we got a high signal. So the probability that's good is based on, you know, that 50-50 chance of just selecting it randomly. And then the Q is that's the probability of it um, getting a high signal given it's good. So that's our 0.75%. And if we calculated it out here, uh, we would get a 0.75%. But like I said, that's because right now P equals uh, one minus P, okay? Now, super emphasize, like we went through this, I want you to emphasize 100%, I'm not gonna make you calculate this because the reality of it is people don't make these decisions rationally, but I want you to know that, you know, there is a way to describe this using mathematics, but, you know, frankly, you're just pulling the answers out of thin air, right? You know, really reading a menu and you're gonna say, I have a 75% chance that it's a, um, a good restaurant would have a menu like this. So that's, that's way too rational and people don't make decisions that rationally. So what the bottom line here is, is it's emotions, okay? And uh, social decision-making situations mean when I'm going to make a decision, I have my own information. If there's any uncertainty about my own information, other people's information can influence my decision. So anytime my own information is a isn't 100% reliable, the other people's signals are going to have an influence on my choice. And that's where we get really these information cascades. I mean, it's not all this red balls and blue balls business. All right, so information cascades. Um, the idea again, if you're 100% rational, they can still have a cascade. And the basic idea with the book by formula is the cascade begins when the difference between the number of acceptances and rejections reaches two. And you can see where, you know, mathematically, as soon as we hit going above a line, you know, that's gonna happen. That happens in that super rational, draw a red ball out or draw a blue ball out. And what do you think is in the, the urn? Actual decision-making is of course super messier but you can get to the same results. And that's why, you know, if I go to 
a certain store in a certain neighborhood here, uh, everyone is going to be wearing a mask. If I go to a different store or a, a store in a different area, maybe even a different kind of store, like almost no one will be wearing a mask. So, you know, if we're talking about the adopt, not ad adopt decision of, you know, is it good to wear a mask during a pandemic? It's super messy and people are definitely relying on other people to um, do it. But again, that's an emotional thing, but there's still an information cascade there. So, um, so is it bad or good? <clears throat> Hopefully we remember now that we had all these problems in like 2016 and they haven't really stopped with like uh, Russian trolls trying to influence elections and trying to like cause uh, sort of divisions in the left wings of uh, many different countries. So social influence, you know, is it bad or good? We are people who know what happens here and we can do things like, um, you know, hire a thousand people to post reviews online for a product. We can hire a thousand people to post comments on a news story. And it's possible with those public signals to influence, you know, the opinions of thousands and thousands of other people. So the public signals, we can make them lean strongly. Uh, one of your book examples or the exercise examples was the non-adopt cascade. Make sure you are aware of when those things happen. Um, of when we have viral news or sort of viral memes, that's a systematic leaning of strongly. And we'll talk more about in chapter 18. There's actually, yeah, when that happens. Um, so remember there's good and bad things. Uh, the next thing you got to remember is when you are a decision maker, you are literally in a network. So you're not getting signals from all over the place. You may not get all of the public signals. So especially on Facebook, we talk about people's uh, filter bubble. You know, that's, that's what we're talking about here. So clusters in the network, that is these filter bubbles can block a cascade from sort of bridging across or within a, one of these bubbles, you might experience an isolated cascade. And, you know, we can see that in the United States right now with uh, people, mainly Trump supporters that don't want to wear masks and um, the sort of other, well, some other different people think masks are a good idea. And one thing you're also going to get, this is pure like the propagandist toolkit is this idea of trying to make information cascades start or stop. And you know, the example I have here is where there was a viral video, this is a while back, where a police officer holds uh, teens at gunpoint on their knees during a snowball fight. And the police are like, hey, that's not the whole story. And the, you know, interestingly, the, if you read the actual what the police story was, it really was they held some teens at gunpoint at a snowball fight. But it was that, you know, they were having a snowball fight and one of the teens took off. And then, it, you know, there were two cops there. One of the teens took off. One of the cops chased that teen and the other cop, like, I don't know, didn't want the other ones to run away or something. But so there was a big attack in the right wing media about how this was a justified um, thing that they stopped and held these kids at gunpoint. And really it was an attack on the reliability. So it was like, you saw this viral video, but what you saw isn't really what happened. So there's a lot going on. Um, you know, this is really big time politics, but keep in mind that information cascades is really a big deal. All right, so that's it for this chapter, and you'll hear from me next time.